Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, studying Buddhist philosophy at uh, Paramita Meditation Center. This is my teacher, Jason. Good morning, teacher. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Uh, our question today about Ratik Buddhist philosophy. Could I ask you about question? Sure. Okay. Yes. So, uh, how could people practice Buddhist philosophy in the right way? Oh, thank you. Good question. <laughs> so, uh, actually, Buddhist philosophy teaching is for inner transformation and inner progression to the path to happiness. So, sometimes, maybe people, they are not well informed about what is the Buddhist philosophy. So they think that Buddhist practice is something that we do for external, you know, like practice. Some things we see, like example, when we look at in a religious perspective, we look like something like religious rituals or ceremony. And when we look at that with the monks and nuns in the monastery, we say, oh, Buddhist practice is something like religious. They do some ritual ceremony. But this is external thing. But this is not actual, like deep or main Buddhist philosophy meaning. Because main Buddhist philosophy meaning is inner transformation. So how we can do Buddhist practice? We have to do the three actions that the Buddha explained. That is study, reflection, and meditation. These are the three things that Buddha mentioned. So this... First, we need to study how to do this Buddhist practice. Example, how I can diminish my anger, how I can increase my love, my joy, my compassion, how I can find, how I can find inner peace, develop my wisdom. So this, uh, first we learn. Second, we have to analyze, to think how it works. You know? Because Buddha he said, we should not follow him only through faith. We have to analyze his teachings. So second, we have to analyze, to think, how is it possible? And third, we will transform our mind through meditation. Actual meaning of meditation is meaning habituation. We habituate the mind to develop our inner qualities. So that is how we should practice Buddhist philosophy. And all Buddhist philosophy is included into two categories of practice, that is compassion and wisdom. So if we want to do good Buddhist practice, we should practice compassion and wisdom. What is compassion? It is non-violence. Non-violence begins in the mind. After, if we have non-violence and compassion and love in the mind, we can have positive speech, positive actions also with the body. So if we practice compassion, we should try to respect all sentient beings, also animals. Also, if possible, insects. <laughs> Sometimes we have ants in the house, mosquito, so we have not so much compassion for them. So Buddhist philosophy, we try to develop compassion for all sentient beings the same. This is one thing. So trying to do always the help and at least no harm. So this is most important. And second is to practice wisdom. We don't do things, uh, we don't do things blindly. You know, we follow Buddha because he said patience is good, because he said compassion is good. No. We have to analyze why is it the case. So we should, should study Buddha's teachings to understand about, example, interdependence, about emptiness, all these subjects. We develop our wisdom and we do things in a very logical way because Buddhist philosophy is a wisdom. So we have to develop, you know, like our critical reasoning. You know, like example, when I was ordained with His Holiness Dalai Lama, he mentioned to me because we were uh, three people coming from foreign countries. So he talked to us, he said, I consider myself half Buddhist monk, half scientist. Because Buddhist philosophy is like, looks like science. Science, we don't believe in something because somebody told. We have to make experience to check what is the reality. So this way, like this, Buddhist philosophy is looking like science. We have to develop our wisdom. So in brief, how we could practice Buddhist philosophy? We develop compassion and wisdom for all sentient beings with compassion and love. How to learn how to do that? First, we study. Second, we think. And third, we try to meditate to develop this in our mind. And we practice this 
day by day. You know, example, we go to work, we meet our husband, our wife, our children, our pet, we meet our neighbors. So we try to always make this practice in our daily life. Not only when we sit under cushion, we are good practitioner when we sit in meditation, but when we go outside, we, we shout, we harm other people. This is not good Buddhist practice. Good Buddhist practice means you always try to cultivate 24 hours a day. If you can, also in your dream. It's still better. You, in your dream, you continue to be a good person. This is best Buddhist practice like this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> See you later. Yes.